r slash ask reddit what is socially acceptable in the us that would be horrifying in the uk when my brit friends were visiting they were horrified when the waiter took their credit card to swipe back at the terminal this made them really uncomfortable i would be uncomfortable too i'm frm canada and they usually hand us the machine so that we can pay ourselves german here same for us you never give your credit card to anyone else if you do and someone steals from you the bank insurance might actually refuse to pay anything back to you saying someone has a lot of spunk my late cat's name was spunky named her when i was four and thought i had made the word up entirely in the us it was a cute and accurate name for a cat when i moved to england i just referred to her as cat the full name is cat few Naming your child Randy. Edit. British people it. Wait. People don't really name their child Randy. Do they? Americans. What's wrong with Randy? I'm Irish. But my dad works for an American company and their CEO's name is Randy Horn. We got a good laugh out of that one. Studied psychology A level and learned about a well known sleep study by Randy Gardner. No one in the class kept a straight face. Coming from the perspective of a British guy, your style of customer service, not universally, but very commonly, it's way too over the top for us. Nobody here can be ducked with that. USA, service with smile. UK, service with shrug. France, service with a sneer. In Germany you have to apologize to salespeople for bothering them in the store. When someone says, make yourself at home actually making yourself at home. Wait no one actually does that, right? People just sit on the couch and maybe grab a cushion. That's all, right? My husband's friend came over one time, uninvited, and immediately used my kitchen sink to give his dog, also uninvited, a bath. A rubber in England is not the same as a rubber in the US. What is a rubber in England? An eraser. I don't know how common it actually is there. But going ducking wild at the cinema during a hugely popular film like Avengers, Endgame or a Star Wars film. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube of the audience reactions to various big franchise films and I don't know how anybody lasts more than a few minutes in that room. When I saw The Force Awakens, like two people half-heartedly cheered when the title screen came up and then someone immediately told them to shut the duck up. We follow extreme librarian rules here. Shut the duck up. Or you're getting a doin'. Oh. I get self-conscious just rustling the bag of popcorn when watching the movie. I can feel everyone getting pissed off at me in the dark. Anything taking over an hour to get to being a short trip. There's an insane amount of Americans that have an hour or more as their daily commute. I live in Texas recently made a day trip two and half there two and a half back that night. That's pretty normal here. I was in Japan once and there was a vending machine selling beer outside my hotel room. So, being British, I bought a can and went to the elevator where I shared an excruciating couple of minutes with two American businessmen. They were horrified at my early day drinking, and I at their willingness to express this. I was in Japan once and there was a vending machine selling beer outside my hotel room. This is already a massive culture shock to Americans in the first place. Just the fact there are vending machines everywhere was a culture shock to me. Walking down a street in Osaka and there must have been a vending machine every 100 feet. I have one that's the other way around. A girlfriend did that hands over the eyes surprise thing and presented me with a little Christmas tree decorated with candy cane. I said oh a dinky little Christmas tree. In America dinky means worthless. In the UK it means small and cute. She cried. I had called my mother to back me up on the misunderstanding. Over here saying something is quite good means it's not bad. In the US it's closer to very good. I had a student from the UK say that a chart I made for a lecture was brilliant. It was a compliment. But if he had been American, it would have been a much bigger compliment. Especially in an academic context. Making tea in a microwave. Whoa. Americans have walk-in microwaves? Yeah it's called Florida. As a Brit in the US, this is a fun one. Pharmaceutical adverts on the TV are still weird after me the length and frequency of commercial breaks in general on TV is shocking low hanging fruit. But anything relating to child beauty pageants just makes me feel physically sick here's a nice one. 
taking 20 plus minutes to help a complete stranger who is struggling with something. The amount of times a total stranger has stopped to assist me or someone I know, you all really make my heart melt. Ninja edit because this blew up. 21 to drink alcohol. Insane. And Americans relationship with booze in general. You all seem to never ever drink ever. Only ever have one glass of wine one beer. Routinely get absolutely ducked. And there is no middle ground. I've never met so many people who straight up never drink booze as I have here. Anything relating to child beauty but jeans don't know any Americans who aren't horrified by these either. Either you're horrified by them or you're involved with them. There is no middle ground. Chatting casually at the lift. Saying elevator instead of lift. The fact that the second floor in the US is the first floor in the UK. Really confusing the first time I went in an elevator in the UK. Politicians mentioning religion when campaigning. Only a few years ago that Tim Farron got raked over the coals when it came out he was quite religious. Which implied he might be anti-gay marriage. Night and day compared with US politics. It haunted that entire general election for him. Everyone knew he was strictly religious but he couldn't really defend himself. As politicians just don't talk about their religion. I remember multiple journalists asking if he thought being gay was a sin and he just had to dodge every question. Bum bag. Not fanny pack. Cos over there your fanny means your ass. Not your ming. Bite scotch egg. Going 5 miles per hour over the speed limit on the right lane. Unless you can claim diplomatic immunity and flee the country. This is so dark but so good. Congrats. Commercials advertising prescription drugs. Ask your doctor if oxycontin is right for you. Meanwhile. This behavior would result in notes in your medical record that follow you around every doctor's office you go to. Being permitted to turn right at a red light, or even left if turning from one one-way street to another one-way street in some states. Unless there is a sign specifying no turn on red. Edit. Jeremy Clarkson calls right turns on red something like America's only contribution to the world. Being able to U-turn at a light unless a sign says otherwise. I'd never seen it until I moved out of my home state. Edit. This is now my most updated comment. Paying more than the price you see on a price tag in a shop due to taxes. WTF just put how much it costs. There is a long-standing distrust of government in general and taxes in particular in the US. Dating back to the days we were a colony, the businesses want to make it clear that we are only charging you $1.99. The filthy government is charging you 2 13 inches. The inverse answer to this question would be calling people a dunt. I feel like Americans are very sensitive to swearing. I can call someone a ducking dunt and it'll have the same energy as if I called them a silly sausage. It just seems standard over here. I've had Americans on Reddit say I'm raging seething because I swore so much in my comments but in reality it's just how I speak. Pub lunch at work with American colleagues. All the Americans were suited and polite drinking soft drinks. One of the UK account managers walks in and and says, Howdy dunts. Who's getting the beers in? Shocked looks all round from the Americans. Chuckles from the British. I've learned from my British friends that you have to be very careful giving peace signs. If you have your hand facing a certain way, it's like a duck you in the UK basically. Whereas in the US it doesn't matter which way it's facing really. Several years ago I sent them a picture with me doing an incorrect peace sign and they were appalled eater. The offensive version is where your palm is facing inwards eater again. My life goal of being on Buzzfeed has been achieved. I'm originally from the UK. Have a son that loves Japanese stuff. So we went to a gun show that had people selling swords. Found a really nice katana for him to hang on his playroom wall. But that surreal moment when we are walking out of the show. With his sword in scabbard. On end. By his side. Walked past a cop at entrance. Who nodded approval nice sword. Then in the parking lot. Past a lad his age and his dad. Both carrying semi-automatics rifles on slings. Both nodded approval and respect to my boy with his sword. The whole show had one hundreds of people walking around with guns. And bags of ammo. Never felt anything but safe. But did think how this would be a tad out of place back home. Definitely out of place. One mate of mine bought a novelty umbrella with a sword handle and got stopped by armed police at the train station. 
My college went into lockdown for a few hours in 2015-2012 because of just such an umbrella. Later that day I saw a shirt that read I survived the writ umbrella massacre of 2015-2012. What dot? Addressing a stranger as sir. The only person you address with sir in the UK is your teacher. Which is weird because school is the only place we don't use it in America. Your teacher is always Mr. Mrs. Miss. Surname. Edit. I am now fully aware that the South had a different experience. You all can stop telling me. I mean routine circumcision would be the big one. It's pretty rare over here. We quite like our floppy little blankets. We sleep on concrete. Eat gravel. And duck with brick dongs. Overworking. It's rewarded and encouraged in the U.S. But during my time in the U.K., my colleagues were horrified by the long hours and lack of holidays that was the norm in the U.S. Is it really rewarded, or just encouraged? My boss made a comment once about me going to lunch every day with my wife. So it depends on your job boss but yeah way too many people live to work here. My British partner and I, American, were in London. Running late to meet our friends. Just as we get to the tube station. I see our train has just pulled in. We haul ass across platform and I yell. Hold the door. Someone does. We make the train. I don't see a problem. My partner. By contrast. Is mortified. This was 4-5 years ago and he is still mortified. Apparently we were meant to just. Let the train leave. Without us. And wait for the next one. I'm more surprised someone held the door. Too polite to decline. Gaps in bathroom stalls. Maybe not social acceptance but in the US you can turn right on a red light. No turning left on a red light for us Brits. Open bracket. Most upvoted comment of mine ever. Well done people. High fructose corn syrup. That's because it has heavy government subsidies. Farmers get millions to grow corn with no market. So it can be converted to HFCS for cheap. Never understood this. The most heavily subsidized crop in the country is being used to make the most unhealthy of all foods. Can't we just pay them to grow something else? I'm sure it's not that simple. But why are we spending all this money just to make everyone unhealthy? Offering full-time employees anything less than 28 days of paid holidays per year. It's not only socially unacceptable, it's illegal. Edit. To clarify. Those 28 days include public holidays, Christmas, Easter etc. Semicolon so a UK workers contract might award 20 days paid holiday plus 8 public holidays. It's pretty common to get more though e.g. 25 days holiday plus 8 days public holidays. 33 days in total. Thank you for the silvers. Colon. Good call out. My company only has 7 paid holidays and depending on your position you might have to work those days. I'm a Brit. This year I get 36 days plus 8 bank holidays. Honestly struggle to use it all lolo. And the company also shuts and pays us for the 3 or 4 days between Christmas and New Year's. When somebody says you should come to their house sometime. Actually going by their house sometime. Really wish I knew this one before spending a year in the UK. I did some serious prep on the cultural norms but missed this one. Cue me chatting to someone at a luncheon who says very enthusiastically you should come over for dinner sometime. And me responding I'd love to, would next weekend work? She got super uncomfortable and awkward and just walked away without saying anything. I was left standing there completely confused. How much sugar is added to US food v UK food? Not just that but portion size. Wait, other countries don't sell 36 ounce individual steaks? Looking around someone's house and complimenting things. At Christmas time tons of people go to places they don't even live at to look at the Christmas decorations people have put up in their neighborhood houses. Sometimes there is lines of like 30 cars going through a neighborhood just to look at people's houses. Yep. There's a street in my town called Candy Cane Lane and its residents go all out with their Christmas decorations. Come December the neighborhood is packed with cars and pedestrians slowly cruising through looking at the displays. Edit. Holy crap. So today I learned that Candy Cane Lane is a very common street name in the U.S. For what it's worth. I live in a town in Northern California. Edit 2. Also I learned that there are a number of them in Northern California. It's Vacaville. 
Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.